What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, special guest, new special guest in Nick Fans Brazil. Uh, I bring uh, in this channel, try for the Knicks recap in this channel. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil. What's going on, guys? What's going on, Knicks fans Brazil? And what's going on, Victor? How you doing, man? Ah, I'm fine and happy to uh, bring you in this channel, bro. First of all, first of all, you know, your first time, first date in Knicks fans Brazil, okay? Uh, do you can uh, introduce yourself for Brazilians? Absolutely. So everybody who's listening, I appreciate you for checking me out. My name is Troy. Um, I am a Knicks content creator. <clears throat> so I currently run the Knicks recap podcast. I am the CEO, the content creator and the uh, producer of that show. I also do uh, content creation for a group called the Knicks Spaces, which is a Twitter community that uh, brings Knicks content creators together. We do Twitter spaces and we help bring Knicks uh, people together. And obviously we hope to get Victor on that uh, someday soon, but that's uh, one of our goals as well. I started as a Knicks fan from way, way back since 1990s, basically. Uh, I was inspired to be a Knicks fan and people are not gonna believe this, by the shoes. I love, <laughs> I love sneakers. And at the time when I was growing up, the, the Ewings, were popular, especially growing up in New York. And the Knicks were, at that time, a very good team. They were a always, year after year, playoff team. You could root for that team, get behind that team. I fell in love with that. I fell in love with the New York passion. The fact that no matter what they did, good, bad, or indifferent, you stuck behind your team. You were part of that community. And when they won, you felt it. And when they lost, you felt it. Yes. I've never felt a sport like that. I've watched, and I love football too. And I've never watched a sport that made me feel that way. So from that moment, Knicks fan. And then I started suffering with everybody else. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you build up, <laughs> you, you, you build up so much knowledge in here from watching it over and over and over again that, you just want to start talking about it. And that's exactly what started to happen. I just started talking about it sometimes over Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And then it happened so that I fell into a gig and some people told me that I had a great voice for it and I had a good knack for it. And then one thing led to another and then my podcast erupted. And then from the start, and I'm very humble to say this, I don't take this for granted, but I'm very humble when I say that when I started, I was helped out a lot. And by luck of the draw, a lot of these times, because everybody's busy, interview after interview after interview just kept coming, you know, my way, just because, you know, I knew the right person or I had the right connection or I spoke the right words. So a lot of things fell to me. And I love that because it shows just the trust that the Knicks community had in me. And I always try to give that back. I, that's why I do interviews like this, too, with you, Victor, to, to just give that love and passion that I feel from the fans back. Um, and one thing that people don't know about me as well, too, I just throw this in there as well, Victor, I do a lot of design uh, content creation. So I do design uh, jersey recolors. I do uh, graphic designs. If you check out my channel right now, I just dropped the Knicks starting five and the uh, bench five uh, on my channel on Twitter. So if you go at, at the Knicks recap on Twitter, you can see that image right now. I digitally designed each one of those images and put it all together for you guys. So it's a good image definitely check it out but yeah that's a little bit about me and uh my story victor ah great i like your design uh i i have a advertising company in brazil i i work with this oh, oh so wow like, look at you long, long time ago <laughs> long time ago bro uh yeah. and uh i saw your design i think it's so great bro i think so great and uh i, I like that um, uh, know more about you, uh, Nick's. Uh, you know, uh, I talk with you in back in backstage. Uh, Nick saved me, bro, and uh, I really love, I really love uh, this thing and uh, in the community, community now, uh, Nick's fan base. 
uh, I think great, bro. I think great. Uh, I, I feel close uh, from uh, United States, uh, from New York with you and then other channels, pages, groups, and uh, people. Yeah, it's uh, really great. Uh, um, this passion, this stronger passion uh, from uh, Nick's fans. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. It's crazy. It's crazy. You remember in the last season, uh, yeah. two games with Boston, uh, like a title, like title. Uh, oh, man. The, the last ball, the last shot uh, from RJ Barrett. Like title, bro. Like title. People crazy. Imagine Knicks champion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Internet stop. It's Internet stop in the in this moment, bro. Because I think Twitter uh, would break. Passion. Twitter would mm -hmm. break in half. Twitter break. would probably take like a whole year off if the Knicks won. Yes. It would be it'd be over for that <laughs> app. <laughs> yes, I agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh so uh uh I won't nah, uh, talk with you in this channel about New York Knicks, of course, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I want your opinion uh, about next season. Uh, the first question, first question, um, what's your opinion? What's your expectations with these two new players in New York Knicks? Uh, Jalen Brunson, and Azaya Hartenstein. What do, what do you think about this guy? Uh, what's your expectations? What do you think? You know, I think a lot of people talk about Brunson, so I'll leave Brunson to the side for a little bit because I have something to talk about with him. But I really want to make this a little bit about iHeart. Isaiah Hartenstein, man, I love that signing. I thought it was, and I'm going to say this, I thought it was the best underrated signing of the offseason because nobody's talking about it. And mm -hmm. he's one of he's he beat Mitchell Robinson in terms of just the time they're on the floor as a clipper last year, protecting the rim. Mm -hmm. And Mitchell Robinson is one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. And he's on our team. So you're talking about Mitchell Robinson is is your first starting center. And then you have Isaiah Hartenstein backing you up a stretch five who can shoot the three. His passing ability is insane. He's a, such a smart passer for what he does as a center. Remember, guys, he's a center, and he mm -hmm. has a passing touch. So he can pass. He can shoot it. He knows how to play underneath the rim. He can get rebounds. If you can do that and you can rim protect, and he's your backup, Isaiah Hartenstein for me was a steal. And he's already showed it in a couple of preseason games already, his passing ability, uh, I think they ran the offense through him uh, last game against the Pacers in the in the third quarter when the offense went stagnant in that game. Um, and the the game, the first game he started playing, he was hitting threes from outside the arc. He made the defense approach, and what happened? Mm -hmm. Entire lane opened up in the paint. Jalen Brunson took advantage. R.J. Barrett took advantage. That's why a stretch five is so important. That's why it's so important in today's NBA. So Isaiah Hartenstein is a completely Completely underrated signing, but such a mm -hmm. steal. Great signing from uh, for the Knicks. Jalen Brunson is Jalen Brunson. Let's get that right. The Knicks, the New York Knicks have a point guard, Victor. Okay, and his name is Jalen Brunson. He yes. is definitively the New York Knicks point guard, and that's it. JB had one bad game out of three preseason games. Other than that, he was smooth. Absolutely. Yes. Victor, this man walks into the paint and does whatever <laughs> he wants. When's the last time a Knicks point guard walked into the paint and did whatever he wanted to do? Steph Marbury? That, that's how long we have to go back, Victor. Bro, it's, 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 this is what we're talking about. So for me, the Knicks, those two, those two signings, both A pluses. Because Jalen Brunson's already showing why he is a point guard in this league to start. And Isaiah Hartenstein, for me, again, for all the things he does, it's incredible that he is a backup to Mitchell Robinson. No, I, I think the same. I think, um, 
Isaiah Hartenstein and begin. I, I don't know so much about this guy. And begin, I don't like it, bro. I, I, I don't lie for you because I don't know so 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 much. I don't I, I don't know nothing about this player. Right. Uh, later, I change my opinion because uh, so many people, so many people, uh, majorly from my guests, uh, um, say uh, very good things about this guy. Uh, yeah. You you comment now, nah, good passer. Uh, this guy can shoot. Um, I like so much because uh, this guy can be open the floor, open space now nah, from drives for Jalen Brown, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, and yeah. so uh, so many skills, so many different skills compared with J uh, Mitchell Robinson mm -hmm. and uh, and Jericho Sims. I, I I think great from this team uh, has a, a center with the skills uh, eight 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 millions uh, Nerlens Noel the same but Isaiah Hartenstein uh, it's very very better uh, from this team in my opinion. Well, he and, plays, um, Victor. He plays uh, Nerlens yes. Noel. I couldn't find him last season. I don't know about you, but I looked around. I looked over here, I looked over here. I looked even on the bench sometimes. I couldn't find him, yes. Victor. So I didn't even know he yes. was a Nick last season, actually, to be honest. So yes. Noel, uh, for me, it's very good in blocks. Very good in blocks. But uh Isaiah Hartenstein, it's uh more more skills now, more uh more interest uh, from the Knicks compared to Nerlens Noel. Absolutely. The price is the same, and uh, Jalen Brown. So you comment, Knicks don't have a solid PG a long time ago, right? And uh, I, I, I don't like for you, okay? Uh, Jalen Brown, so for me, it's not a franchise player, it's not a PG from my dreams, okay? But needs, needs so much a uh, solid PG. And uh, Jalen Brunson can be this uh, solid PG. I like Jalen Brunson. I like it. It's a good player. I like yeah. your energy. I like your energy. Uh, I I I think I I have the same the same high, the same uh, like feeling. Jalen yeah. Brunson, yes, yep. and, and Jalen Brunson. Uh, fight your opponents uh like a giant uh in the in the miles car. turner yeah miles turner yes. he, pushed, he pushed miles turner over like he was a little piece of meat you know what i'm talking yes. about victor when you're a little piece of chicken flapping like this right yes. push you to the side like that that's what jalen brunson did to miles turner that game <laughs> i loved watching i'm just saying i loved watching that victor i love it man. <laughs> and uh, i want your opinion um uh, do you think uh, Jalen Brunson can help uh, Julius Randle in the next season? Because I am uh, disappointed with J uh, Julius Randle in yeah. the last season. For me, it's a big problem. It's here in the last season, okay? But I want your opinion. Uh, do you believe Jalen Brunson can help Julius Randle uh, play better uh, in the next season? Well, Victor, Randall probably can't play worse than he did last year. I mean, he fell from, when I'm talking about fell from grace, he fell all the way down from grace. In every category, you could say he made a, a gigantic downfall. So it wasn't good. And everybody's going to point to his stats a lot, you know, that he was 20 something and 10 and eight and whatever the case may be. Sure, you're going to do that. When you're point Julius and you touch the ball all the time, guess what? You're going to pass the ball a lot and you're going to get those assists. A lot of those things are empty to me. A lot of his rebounds last season were, were empty to me. So you can't go worse than that. So do I think that Jalen Brunson is going to make him better? Absolutely. And we actually have seen it in preseason, Victor. If you looked, uh, we haven't seen Point Randall. Not, well, not often. He, he did walk the ball up about four or five times. I don't know why I count. I just have to count it. 
uh, yesterday's game against the Pacers, right? I saw it. We all did. But for the most part, he's trusted Jalen Brunson. And he's let Jalen Brunson be Jalen Brunson. And you can see that with the shot attempts, too. I mean, Randall hasn't been shooting 20 shots. I mean, I think the most shots he's he's gotten up is maybe 12. Now, it's preseason. I know it doesn't really matter yet. But and if you're looking at minutes and you're looking at, you know, all that stuff, he's not playing as many minutes anymore. He's yes. He's not controlling the ball anymore, so he's not dictating pace. He doesn't, he has two turnovers in all the three preseason games that they played. Two turnovers. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw <laughs> the last so, season <sighs> turnovers. Show uh, rain, rain, turnovers, oh my rain. God. First, it was like, it was like crazy, <laughs> it was never ending. So the fact of the matter is, you can already tell that his game has changed because. He's lost weight, so he knows his game this season has to be running and cutting because that's why, why else are you going to cut the weight, right? So he's cut the yes. weight because he knows he has to play with Jalen Brunson. He knows he has a point guard that he trusts, so he doesn't have to control the ball. And he's not holding the ball for more than five seconds, Victor. Check him out. When he's when he's controlling the ball now, he's I not remember. holding the ball for five seconds. I remember. I closed my eyes uh, when Randall uh, – Take the ball yep. and the, the last shot uh, with Randall. I close my eyes because Randall wrong uh, and so many the last the last shots in this game is true. Yeah. It's complicated, but but uh, I just want to Randall play better. Randall play better. It's good f uh, from the Knicks. I love New York Knicks. So uh, for me, it's it is very cool with this um now i won't talk with you about rj barrage okay rj barrage okay uh first of all uh you i mentioned first time in, in nick fans brazil channel okay all the guests uh i make this question do you believe uh rj barrage uh can be a future all-star and I won't make it two questions with RJ Barrett. This uh, the first. The second, uh, what's your opinion about the RJ Barrett extension? Uh, so, do you do you uh, do you believe RJ Barrett can be a future all star? And what do you think about RJ Barrett extension? So, Victor, funny story. I actually wore my. I actually almost wore my all star hat. I have an all-star Knicks hat, and I'm waiting <laughs> to put that hat on uh, once RJ becomes an all-star. Because it's not an if, it's not an if he will, okay? He's improved every single year, okay? Let's get that straight. And he's 22 years old. 22 years, 22 years old, improved every in every basically every category he could possibly improve in every single year, except maybe three-pointers and free throws, which he looks like he's getting better at. From these couple preseason games nonetheless will he become an all-star yeah absolutely i had no doubt in my mind actually uh extension was great um 107 million guaranteed 120 million if he meets his incentives and his incentives are great incentives to have all the uh, nba first teams all defensive teams making an all-star team these are things you want him to do anyways so the fact that now he's incentivized to do it yeah absolutely it was a steal and you didn't have to pay him the rookie max of 185 million so you saved money, you retained a franchise cornerstone player for way less than you were going to have to pay him if you kept, if you didn't pay him at all, and you let him go into unrestricted free agency. Now you, you locked him down for four years, and he has a massive chip on his shoulder, Victor. And for so many reasons, but there is a reason that nobody's talking about. In his own draft class, in his mm -hmm. own draft class, you got Ja Morant, you got Zion Williamson, and you got Darius Garland, right? Darius yes. Garland went after him. All mm -hmm. three of those players got max deals. Every single one, except RJ. You don't think he has a chip on his shoulder? He's. Wait. So I he, understand. I understand. I understand your point. I understand. Bro, uh, everybody in, in this channel, all the guests, uh, everybody knows. I super, super believe in RJ Barrett. 
I have a Funko from RJ Barrett. I have a Randall Funko too, but uh, Randall uh, lied to me in the pandemic season. But uh, I hope, Randall, yeah. you better in the next season. I have uh, so many Funkos here. And uh, RJ Barrett, I super believe in this guy. Oh, what the, well, you got it for it. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes let's go let's go a big fan bro a big fan from rj barrage i see he's making me go so, i'm gonna get one i have to get one of those i gotta get one i need ah, it i i will i will send to you when i oh. come to united states oh i got uh, you definitely <laughs> <laughs> so i i super believe in this guy really yeah. uh well We'll see, né? We'll see in the future. We'll see in the future. Um, so, um, I won't uh, talk with you about another subject. Uh, you know, in Nick Fans Base, uh, so many people uh, talking about Quentin Grimes versus Evan Fournier. Okay? You know, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, what's your opinion about the subject? Oh, man. Um, so <laughs> it's it's actually very easy, right? Just to, just doing it based off of stats, right? Just stats. Mm -hmm. Grimes makes sense. That's number one. On the eye test, just the eye test, Grimes makes sense. So just on those two things alone... It makes sense to start Grimes. Now let's just get into it. Grimes is a three and D specialist. That's what he was in college. That's what we drafted him for. That's what he is. Evan Fournier is a shooting specialist. He's a sniper. Never been... <laughs> if you he's not Steph Curry. Let's see. He's not Steph Curry sniper. But yeah, I mean, understand. He's a, understand. Yeah, he's, he's, made, he's a baby sniper, maybe. Uh, yeah. But you know, and he, you know, sure, you want to give him. He broke the three point record for the Knicks. He did. You know. I get it. Listen, it's a cool accolade to have. I don't like those accolades in losing seasons, to be honest. I get he broke it, but in a losing season, it's, it, for me, it means nothing. But uh, I, I get it. He has it. He's a great three-point shooter. Here's the thing now. You got Brunson, you got RJ, you got Randall, and Mitch is going to get some burn. Somebody's going to get left out of that offense. Somebody's going to lose shots. And if, you ha if we've looked at preseason, Evan Fournier is not getting that many shots anymore. And if you're taking away his strongest asset with his shooting, because he's not going to get that many shots because you're going to give it to Randall Brunson, RJ, and Mitch, why not have Grimes in there who will yes. give you the defense and he defense. can shoot just as good as Fournier can? It's in the stats. He can shoot just as good shoot, uh, as Fournier. Shoot like the same. Uh, you, you, uh, you saw like uh, alan houston the movement for oh, yeah, yeah. you you he's definitely you, not you, alan houston see? like yet but he has the he has the motion he's working on the motion for the shot i'll give you that he's not he's oh. not houston with it yet though but maybe <laughs> yes, if he works yes. on it if he works on it maybe <laughs> i'm not trying to go, go there yet go <laughs> yeah i got you what you too i you too oh my goodness Oof! I pray he turns into Houston. If he turns into Houston, he's gonna be a problem. Oh my goodness! I hope. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think, I think Evan Fournier from the bench, uh, more great uh, for me, because uh, Evan Fournier uh, enter in games uh, with uh, three points, one fire, uh, right. In, right. Uh, put fire in these games. Uh, I think great. Uh, but uh, I, I agree with you. Quentin Grimes, it's better in defense and can shoot. Uh, he he don't need the ball like Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. Uh, he can play without the ball in the in the ER games. I think great this. And um, I really, really, I really uh, won't. Uh, I don't believe in the begin from the season, Quentin Grimes starter. But 
uh, All Star Game, in the the I, I believe All Star Game uh, Quentin Grimes can be starter. Okay, uh, Quentin Grimes will be uh, uh, more minutes, but starter I believe in All Star Game later because you know tips you know you know yeah. <laughs> in my channel in brazil people don't like so much tips okay I, Two I hashtags. That, by the way by the way victor that sentiment is shared in new york too <laughs> really because yeah. oh in my channel um two hashtags in the last season two uh one trade randall two yeah. fire tips <laughs> two hashtags in this channel last last season bro because yeah. uh it's complicated but but uh, uh i don't know so uh talk so much about but i i angry uh with uh, some things uh tips uh with uh your talks now nah, with these players randall's uh big big minutes so much minutes in your games but uh tips has your style your talks talks now nah? but uh i don't know bro but uh i believe quentin grimes in future will be a starter bro but i i i, I talk uh about grimes because i won't talk with you uh about younger players younger players from the knicks okay um uh, obi Taupin, emmanuel kickley deuce mcbride uh and uh, jericho sings um i want uh, your opinion about these younger players i i talk it with you our guests in the in the the interviews about uh expectations yeah uh i am uh, worry about ken Reg. i don't believe ken Reg, uh has a chance in this team uh looking for the first and the second unit okay but yeah. it's my opinion i like ken Reg. Okay, but I, I I can't see, I don't believe in the in this team. So I want your opinion. Okay. What what do you think about this? You know, Cam Reddish, and I'm I've I've said it, I tweeted about it, uh, I said it on the post game show yesterday as well, too. I asked this question to everybody. Nobody could give me a straight answer. Has Cam Reddish done enough to earn a rotational spot on this next team mm -hmm. the answer is very simple no he had to do something spectacular with yes. the minutes that he had he had subpar first of all he was a ghost offensively for most of the games that he played mm -hmm. and everybody a lot of people were praising his defense some people even called his defense elite his defense, first of all, if you play only on the, if you play the passing lanes, but you get blown by on defense and you're only good on one side of the ball, that does not make you a good defender. It, that, that doesn't make sense. So Cam Reddish played subpar defense. He looked good in some moments, had some nice steals, had a good give and go with RJ, up and under move that he did against uh, the Pacers. I saw those moves. I like it. I love Cam Reddish. I think he has all the talent in the world. Guess what? Doesn't mean anything if you can't show it. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to root for something, Victor. He hasn't given me anything to root for. So what am I, what am I fighting Thibs on saying, hey, he deserves minutes because of that? If Thibs doesn't play him, I have no problems with not playing him because he hasn't done anything for me to, to, for me to get him mad about from not playing. He hasn't done anything. If anything, mm -hmm. Jericho Sims has probably done more to earn playing times than Cam Reddish has. Jericho Sims, when he's really? out there, he's been doing a really? lot. He's been cleaning up the glass. He's been playing backup center when Isaiah Hartenstein's been in foul trouble. He's grabbing the boards, hitting blocks. He's a presence in the paint, and that alters shots. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that does more than Reddish did. 
um, in my opinion, and it and it led to easy offensive buckets on the other end. So again, it lead it led to winning plays. So I can't knock it. I got to be happy with it. Um, McBride it was a thief in the first uh, preseason game. He got six steals. It was ridiculous. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Thibodeau seems consistent with playing him, but it's preseason. I don't see where he could fit. If Thibodeau is very much locked into this 10-man rotation, which, by the way, I'm 100% against, it makes no sense to be locked into a 10-man rotation when you have depth. Because the point of that is to rest your players, use the depth, you don't burn those players out, and you get to use them later on in the season. But if you're going to continue to burn them out, play Randall 40-plus minutes, RJ 38, 39 minutes, give no minutes to the backups, what are they there for? What are they just holding a bench spot? You might as well not even play them. So Mm -hmm. you have to be able to use your depth. But in all honesty, I don't see, I love McBride. I think he deserves some minutes. I don't think he's going to get any minutes. In defense, in defense, it's stronger in defense. He he is. He's good. He's good. He's always been a good defender. His steals got better. He looks more comfortable out there. I'll say that. He definitely looks more comfortable, but he's not going to see any time, Victor. Mm -hmm. When the regular season starts, it's not going to be McBride off the bench. The starters are who they are. We know Fournier is going to start because Grimes hasn't seen any action. We hope we see him, uh, you know, for uh, preseason's final game against the Wizards on Friday, right? So we'll see if he mm-hmm. plays then. But if he doesn't play, he's going to be a reserve, and your reserves are already set. Rose, quickly, Grimes, Toppin, Hartenstein. There is no budge in that. Mm-hmm. Reddish is not getting time. McBride's not getting time. Sims is not getting time. Something's going to need to happen to one of those five for something somebody to be inserted in there for a McBride or a, you know, a Sims or whatever the case may be. But that's the only way it's happening because this coach is not adaptable. Other coaches in the modern NBA, when they play certain teams, they won't play that lineup that they normally play. They'll play an altered lineup because it better matches up to the lineup that they're playing against. That's being adaptable. This coach doesn't do that. He's locked into a 10 man rotation and that won't change. And uh, what do you think, for example, um, Obi Tolpin? Do, do you think uh, Obi Tolpin uh, can be more minutes uh, in the next next season? Emmanuel Kikley, what do you think about this guy? I think Emmanuel Kikley is, is in the future, is the uh, six man, six man from, from the New York Knicks, okay? But uh Emmanuel Kikley needs uh Maturi in our game. Um uh, I like Emmanuel Kikley, but no, nah. and uh, I want your opinion. You are the guest, special guest <laughs> in, the, in this channel. What do you think about Obi Tobin? What do you do you think he has a more minutes? And wh- what do you think about Emmanuel Kikley? It's scary about the top the minutes right now. So I'll say this. The minutes of yesterday's game, if you looked at it, was split pretty evenly between Randall and Toppin. I think it was 23, 25 or something like that. So it was split pretty evenly. But that's preseason. I don't anticipate that going up or staying the same in regular season. I anticipate Randall playing more, mm-hmm. which ultimately means that Obi is going to play less. That's a That's a terrible move. If anything, Obi's been one of Obi, RJ, and Brunson probably have been the brightest spots in all of these games. And I'm, that's not to say that Obi's not been bad. His some of his threes have been atrociously bad. They've been off hitting the side of the backboards. It's been terrible. But his dunks, his power plays, his energy, what he brings, his blocks, he looks better on defense. You have to notice those things. He's, in my opinion, he's the he's the only reserve probably that's done the most to earn more minutes off that bench. I think that he could fight Randall right now for more minutes off that bench. And I think depending on the game, if he's playing better, he should be kept in. I mm-hmm. think that's the level of trust he's earned at this point because he's playing to a level where his dunks are game changing. They alter the amazing, they, amazing dunks. Imagine you're an opponent. You're even on a lead or a streak. And then that type of dunk hits you. It like collapses your entire audience, your energy, your whole thing drops. And it gives you now, the Knicks, an opportunity to get back into the game. Because you deflate the entire stadium or space or arena 
when you just dunk it like that with no regard for who's guarding you or who's behind you, it's it, he's, that's a power play. Emmanuel quickly, though. Let me say this. I had high hopes for Emmanuel quickly coming into this season. It's only been a couple of preseason games, so I'm going to reserve a lot of my hate till later. Mm -hmm. But Emmanuel quickly needs to show me something else. I am not mm -hmm. liking what I'm looking. He show I see a lot of the post season, I mean off season workouts and all that stuff, right? I've seen it all. Where is that now? I don't see it. Yesterday's game, he probably played the worst third quarter of a point guard than I've ever seen in my life. All teamy worst <laughs> we think Diana, I'm, say, I'm I'm telling you right now, he the didn't second pass the, unity don't play well. He was a big part of that though, Victor. The entire so the entire second unit, the entire second unit has a plus minus of a negative. They had a negative plus minus the entire second unit. You're not gonna win a game like that. But Emmanuel quickly led that offense to the ground. Because when you don't pass and you just mm -hmm. shoot, he had 18 shots. He was four for 18, Victor. He took 18 uh -huh. shots off the bench. That was more than Julius Randle took as a starter. <laughs> That's crazy. I understand Victor. your point. I That's understand ridiculous. your point. You can't, you're not doing that. And you're not doing that as a guard. He showed me in that game why Rose is so necessary. And that's scary because you don't want Rose to be part of the, the minutes like that. You want the young guys to get them. But how can, you quick, how can you make the argument for quickly getting them when he gives you performances like last night where it's like, oh, crap, if Rose was in there, he probably would have controlled the pace more. He would have mm -hmm. probably handled it better. And that's probably true. So quickly, I'm going to, again, I'm going to wait and see. I don't like what I've seen so far. He needs to learn how to pass. He needs to learn better shot selection. And guess what? These two things, we said it last season when, before we started the season. The exact same thing. So we're saying the same stuff that we're saying last season. Not about, the uh, about the selection shots, uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, so many people comment with me about this. Uh, I like because uh, Emmanuel Kikley don't fear. Don't, don't fear about uh, your, uh, your game. But I, I, I agree. Uh, this guy... Uh, but, uh, has a uh, has better in your choice from your shots i i agree with you you mentioned uh dark rose i want i want to talk about this guy bro i love i love dark rose okay i love mm -hmm. but i want your opinion about dark rose um do you do you have uh expectations yet yet about this guy or uh do you think this guy now uh it's more like a, a mentor for from these younger players in this team uh what do you think about derrick rose and new york knicks i love derrick rose i think uh derrick rose is the leader we were missing last season and derrick rose said it actually in an interview he says that the way he leads is how is how he plays through his play mm -hmm. So he can be vocal. I'm not saying he can't be, but yes. that's not how he leads. He leads through playing. So the Knicks didn't see that or have that on the floor last season. They're going to have it this season. Everybody who thinks that Rose not playing in the preseason is some precursor to meaning that Rose won't play during the regular season. I don't know who you thought the coach was. You might want to recheck that. It's Tom Thibodeau, and he's going to play Rose. If Rose is healthy, Rose is playing and Rose is probably getting yes. as many minutes as he wants. If the world wants to play 25 minutes, he'll play 25 minutes. If Rose doesn't have a cap that night, Tom Thibodeau will play him as many minutes as he's good in there for. Because that's what it's about. And he will embrace that mentor role because that's what he's been doing, actually. If you notice in the first season when he was playing, when he was, you know, traded uh, here during that, you know, almighty fourth seed when we uh, captured that, right? Uh, during that time when Rose came on, he was a big influence to Toppin and, and quickly, and they learned a lot. And when you saw them all in the game together, you could, you could see that chemistry building. Um, so I very curious to see what, you know, a couple years now later, what Toppin, Rose and quickly look like now it could look better. We don't know. I don't know. I've not seen it enough to really make a comment on it, but I think Derek Rose, apart from all that stuff is a locker room vet and a leader. And everybody has respect for Derrick Rose. No matter who yes. you are, what team you're on, you see Derrick Rose, you know what he's gone through. 
I mean, you know, when you see this man play, you're like, look at what he's come through. Look what he's come back from. Nobody would come back from that. Most people would have retired given the injury history he's had. And not only has he's come back, but he's thrived and played himself into another lofty contract with us. And you know what? He deserved it. Nobody gave him any crap about Do you notice out of all the contracts that were given, Rose's contract is not mentioned as a terrible one? Because mm -hmm. of all the things he gives you that's not mentioned. All the things that he gives you that it's not really said. It's just an, it's amazing to it's amazing to witness Victor. Rose is a, is a difference maker. And a lot of people are really not putting a, a spotlight on that. So I'm happy you gave me uh, that uh, question here today because I think Rose is an important piece that the Knicks got back this season. It's very important. It's very important uh, developing younger players. Uh, your voice, your voice uh, from this team. <laughs> you remember in interview, uh, Derek Rose is talking and uh, <laughs> mentioned uh, Julius Randle understand for him. You remember, you remember yeah. about your attitudes uh, in the last season. Derek Rose talk it. Uh, yeah, careful, but mention. Nick fans understand. Oh, yeah. The, and Randall Rose understood said. it too. Randall understood yes. exactly what he was saying. And Rose and yes. Rose basically said, for the fans who didn't hear it, to paraphrase, Rose basically said, calm the hell down. <laughs> Don't let it get to you. This is New York. You can't let it get to you. The more yes. you let it get to you, the more the fans are gonna get on you. It's a it's a it's a it's a disease, it's gonna happen. So play He's, through it, yes. play with it. And if Randall and I, I by the way, I'm rooting for Randall. I think Randall's gonna have a comeback season. He looks prime and ready to have one of the best seasons of his career. I think he's gonna have a bounce back year like nobody's business. I give him the props, but yeah, don't get it twisted. Uh, it's all about the passion that you show. Yes. You show that yeah. passion on the court, the Knicks fans are going to embrace you. They're going to love you. No matter what you did, they're going to love you. But if you don't, they're going to continue to do the same stuff because you haven't shown them anything different. Yeah, the passion, né? the passion uh, has né? love and hate uh, yes. walking together. Yes. Uh, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, that's right. And the, the last, last question for you, uh, the most important question. <laughs> uh, what's your expectations uh, with the New York Knicks in the next season? Do you believe uh, playing, playing and uh, playoff later or 60 seed uh, playoffs or don't believe nothing <laughs> in the next <laughs> season? So I want to put it out there that if, if we're talking about dreams, I hope the, the Knicks win a championship. <laughs> but uh, but in all in a right, <laughs> but in all realistic terms, we're just talking realistic here. There is no shot in hell that the Knicks even sniff playoffs. The East is more stacked this year than any other year. Go look. Go look at the stats. The East is better this year than any other year for the last, I think, what, five, ten years probably. I agree. I agree. I agree. You, you can name six teams right now, Victor. Six teams right now that are probably a lock for playoffs. So that means what? Playing? This team for me is an eight to ten. That's where their mm -hmm. range is. I think they'll get to playing because I don't think – I think because I think they're just better – than some of the teams underneath them. They're better than Indiana. They're better than the Pistons. I mean, there are some teams that are just going to be better than because of the talent that they have, right? So that's going to happen. Um, can they sneak in to the playoffs? A lot. Of, see, a lot has to go right for that to happen. RJ is going to need to take a step. Randall's going to have to understand his role. Jalen Brunson's going to have to be on. OB Toppin's going to have to do more than what he's doing now um, and have to be a better rebounder as well, too. You combine all of that, get a little bit of Hartenstein improvement. This team could definitely get a playoff spot, but there's they're not making it out of the playoffs. I mean, as, no matter what, who are they going to face? If they, if with the Bucks, they face the Bucks, they're going to lose. They face the Nets, they're going to lose. They face the Miami Heat, they're going to lose. You face any three of those teams, you're going to lose, unless the Nets implode, maybe. That's the only shot you probably got. But other than that, I mean, look who's up there. The Sixers are up there. The Boston's up there. I'm like, 
it's a litany. So no matter who the Knicks go up there against, the shot of them, where if they get into the playoffs, the first round is going to probably be unbearable for them. They're probably not going to even get out of that. So it's foolish to think anywhere anywhere else than that. Their ceiling is probably a playoff spot. Mm-hmm. But I, I see I see they're, they're really being an 8 to 10 and maybe getting that play-in position. And I don't even know if they win that, that play-in game. It depends on who yes. that play-in game is against. No, I agree. I totally agree with you. Uh, I I think I think the same. I think the same, because our conference it's very strong, very strong in yeah. the next season, and uh, uh, man, uh, I I agree with you. But I mentioned in the last in the the last interviews uh, in this channel, bro. You will remember uh, pandemic season, okay? Yeah. Who is the PG in Knicks in pandemic season? I don't want to say this name. I, I, Alfred Payton. I don't like this guy. I don't like. Wait, my sorry, eyes, Victor. There's my... a lot of static, so I can hear what you said. What? What you said? I heard bad point guard. And <laughs> hear what you said. <laughs> Uh, bro, Alfred Payton, bro, it's complicated so much. And the Knicks, bro, four, four seeds in pandemic season, bro. Uh, with uh, Alfred Payton, point guard, bro. Now, uh, Knicks has a uh, Jalen Brunson, a solid PG. Yeah. Uh, so I won't, I really won't. Uh, Knicks surprise me. I, I, I mentioned in the last interviews, uh, like now, um, I want this thing surprise me because in pandemic season, bro, you know, uh, nobody, nobody believes in Knicks. Nobody. That's, that's right. Knicks four seed, four seed. Uh, so I want, bro, I want this team surprise me. Yeah. Uh, RJ Barrett uh, in interview, Knicks will shock. I want this. I want this. I want surprise. Good surprise. Bad surprise. I am tired. Bad surprise. I am tired. Okay. <laughs> I want good surprise from this team. And nobody, nobody knows uh, the future, bro. Nobody. Look, the, in the in Brazil, Troy, in the last season, channels, uh, ch- these channels in Brazil. Um, talking in Brooklyn Nets versus Los Angeles Lakers uh, from uh, NBA Finals, bro. Wow. Look, look this. Uh, people before start the last season, Bru- uh, Brooklyn Nets versus Los Angeles Lakers. Okay, uh, Brooklyn Nets. Oh, never be, never be. Never be. I make the curse from the steam, bro. I make Good. the curse. Keep it. Never there. be. Good. Never Good. be giant. Keep it. Okay. Keep it. <laughs> keep, keep it small. Keep it small. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, Nick's lost from. Ah, bro. Nobody cares. Nobody cares for with the Brooklyn Nets, bro. So, exactly. um, I really want, bro. Because uh, I talk with uh, this so much, New York City and Nick fans around the world deserves uh, a new great team, bro. Deserves, really deserves a great team. I miss, bro. I miss so much Knicks in playoffs, Knicks giant in this league. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just, I just want uh, this team surprise me. Just it. Just See, they, it. Victor, they won't surprise you unless Fournier sits on that bench. I'll tell you right now, the surprise element cannot happen if Fournier is your starting guard. It's just not happening. If Quentin Grimes does not get that role, you're not getting surprised. A pro- it's a promise. It's a promise. He needs but, uh, to get that role. But uh, I have one secret, bro. Uh, I talked with so many channels in the last interviews. We need to buy a glass from uh, Evan Fournier. Look, just Boston Celtics in your games, bro. <laughs> Evan Fournier, MVP. 
MVP, bro. Do re oh, you yeah. remember? <laughs> when he plays against Boston, that's all. That's, that's the only game he should start against. When we play Boston, let him start. Other than that, he's oh. still on the bench. Assim, ó, Fournier, just the Boston. Just the Boston. You play with the Boston. Evan Fournier, MVP, bro. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> play every game. If you play 82 games against Boston, the Knicks probably win a championship. If with Evan Fournier oh. against it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> But serious, oh, bro. I, I agree with you. I agree with you, with your point. I joke so much because I don't like it. Uh, this interview so serious. Uh, I don't oh, yeah. like it, bro. I, I make it. I make it. Alan Hur joke with me in our interview. Uh, yeah. Donovan Mitchell, uh, uh, Spider Man 4. Coming to the Knicks, uh, it's very, uh, very funny, bro. I, yes, I like sir. this. I like this. So... Oh, yeah. Th these are my type of, Victor, these are my type of interviews. Like, if you've seen any of my interviews as well, too, it's not really, you know, monotonous or serious. It has a lot of high energy, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, expressions. And more importantly, it has good content. It's just like these type of interviews, you know. That's why I think people watch you. I think that's why people watch me. I think that's why they like the content that we do. And, um, I think that's what makes this different. A lot of people don't do that. You know, I think, you know, my passion, what I bring, you can see it. Your passion, you know, I can see it. That <laughs> makes us different, right? That's what's perfect. <laughs> We can connect. I'm in New York and you're in Brazil. We can still connect on that next level, even from here. Yes. And uh, I really say thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Your first time. I hope you enjoy uh, oh, yeah. your your participation huh? in your, your channel. I hope see you uh in the future again with us and um i like so much bro i like so much this interview and uh i hope in the future we talking knicks and playoffs knicks uh okay i hope i Man. really hope victor i appreciate you having me on i appreciate uh knicks fan brazil having me on all the uh fans listening right now and about to watch i appreciate you guys for uh rocking with me and victor it was a pleasure uh talking to everybody And uh, yeah, Victor, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, you're a guest on my show anytime you want. I'll definitely come back on. And I think if the Knicks do make the playoffs, I think we got to get another show going because that's going to be a very <laughs> good show. <laughs> I hope, really hope. Oh, God man. help this, me. This, this is going to be the emoji <laughs> right there. Yes. Oh, <laughs> a meme. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. Take care, bro. And course, I see man. you in the future, bro. Peace. Bye, bye. Later, man. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então, eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos e também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não, para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço!
I'm a Knicks fan, I gotta stay true. Yes, I do. Are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a 